using trigonometry. So in the first example, I have sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta equal to zero. Now in trigonometry, don't get intimidated with the new symbol theta because theta is just x. So if you're used to uh, seeing x as a variable, you can replace theta by x when you're working on your solution. And then in your final answer, just change it back to theta just to be consistent with our work. Now for this example, I have uh, um, an equation wherein I can use the Pythagorean identity in one of the terms. And in this case, I chose sine squared theta to replace it with the Pythagorean identity 1 minus cosine squared theta. Now can you change cosine squared theta instead of sine squared theta, of course. So there's no one or single step or single way on how to answer trig equations because some people use a different uh, identity than the other. So it all depends on uh, how you show your work and how you use your identity in solving for x. Now, I now have my new equation with uh, the new identity with 1 minus cosine squared theta minus cosine squared theta equal to 0, I can now simplify my equation by combining like terms. I combined cosine squared theta, so now I have 1 minus 2 cosine squared theta equal to 0. And for solving for x or for theta, all I need to do is to have cosine theta by itself. So that is your goal, to have your trig equation or trig function by itself. So I'm getting rid of 1 by subtracting 1 on both sides. And I'll have negative 2 cosine squared theta equals negative 1. I need to get rid of negative 2 by dividing both sides by negative 2. And I'll have 1 half. And since my cosine theta still has an exponent of 2, I can get rid of my exponent by taking the square root of both sides. So now I have cosine theta equal to plus or minus 1 over the square root of 2. Now there are two things that you need to uh, remember when you're simplifying this equation. One is that you need to rationalize your um, denominator because it has a radical underneath it and two you need to take note that you have a plus or minus sign whenever you take the square root of both sides when you're solving equation so for cosine theta we have the positive and neg negative values of square root of negative square root of 2 all over 2 and we need the unit circle to solve for these function and in the unit circle uh, the theta is true for pi over 4 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. So we have four values of theta because of the plus or minus symbol that we have uh, used in getting rid of the exponent 2. Now for example number 2, we have cosine squared x plus cosine x minus sine squared x. Now in this example, what I did is I set my equation to 0 for my first step. And when I set it to 0, I decided to change sine squared x to uh, 1 minus cosine squared x because if I do that, I'm going to have all cosine in my equation and it makes uh, solving the trig equation a lot easier. So now I have cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1 plus cosine squared x equal to 0. And for solving for x, all I have to do is to combine like terms. Now I have 2 cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1, which is factorable if we convert it into algebraic expression. So 2 cosine x squared plus cosine x minus 1, you can visualize it as 2x squared plus x minus 1, which you can factor and it will give you 2x minus 1 and x plus 1, which I then transform into a trig equation based on our problem. And I know that it's factorable, so I can use the zero product property to uh, solve my equation. So I have 2 cosine x minus 1 equal to 0 and cosine x plus 1 equal to 0 and solving for x I have two values of cosine x. One is for 1 half and one is for negative 1. And now I'm going to use my unit circle to solve for x to find the specific values of the angles wherein 1 half or cosine x is equal to 1 half. So I have pi over 3, 5 pi over 3 and pi. Now for my example number three, I have three tangent uh, squared x plus two secant squared x plus one. And uh, using the Pythagorean identity again, because if you've noticed every time you have an exponent of two in your trig function, you always use the Pythagorean um, identity. And that's what I did. So in this case, I changed my tangent squared x into secant squared x minus one using the Pythagorean identity so that all my equation here will be secant. 
So uh, by simplifying it, I have 3 secant squared x minus 3 and 2 secant squared x plus 1. And by, combine, by combining like terms, after setting it to 0, I'll have 3 secant squared x and minus 2 secant squared x that I can combine, and negative 3 minus 1. So I end up with secant squared x minus 4 equal to 0. Now, the goal is to have secant x by itself. So add 4 on both sides and take the square root of both sides to get rid of your exponent 2. And you'll have secant x equals plus or minus 2. Now, secant is not in your unit circle. So what you need to do is to find its inverse, which is cosine. So since secant x is the inverse of cosine x, you take the reciprocal of positive 2 or pos positive and negative 2, and you'll have plus or minus 1 half. So this is what you will need to use um, your unit circle too, so you'll find the values of x. So using the unit circle, we'll have four values because it's plus or minus, and they are pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3.